Praise the Lord. Who's excited to be in the house of God tonight? Who's excited to be in the house of God tonight? Amen? Woo! I've been excited all the all way. Well, since we started this thing, I've been excited. It's been building. It's been Steve rolling. Man, I'm excited. Turn, turn, to, uh, turn to 2 Chronicles. Not to be repetitious. 2 Chronicles 7. That's all right with everybody. As you're turning there, let me tell you, vain repetition is a bad thing. But repetition that brings forth fruit is a great thing. And that's what God uses. Uh, how, how much repetition and practice did it take for you to, to first hold a bottle? Didn't get it on the first try, did you? Your mom would probably stuck that in there. Hold that thing. Hold that thing. It didn't work. How about to use a spoon? How many of y'all ended up with that thing, that stuff all over your face? You know, your kids do that too? It took some time, right? How about learning your alphabet? I'm struggling. I'm still working on it. It took some time, didn't it? What did you have to do? You wrote that stuff over and over and over again until you got it, right? How about memorizing the scripture? How many of y'all get it on the first try? I don't. Man, it takes me many tries. I mean, my son, he, he's, he's a whiz. I don't know. God blessed him with something special. Be able to memorize verses and things and just blows me away. But it took time. It took repetition. It took going over it over and over and over and over again. So why would we think that the means by which we learn earthly things does not apply to spiritual things? That's how you get it. That's how you get it. How do you, how do you know that's what God wants you to know? Because you went over it again and again and again and again. How many of y'all have memorized the Ten Commandments? How about John 3.16? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. You know it because you see it everywhere. You've wrote it, probably. Right? It's a repetition. It's not vain repetition. It's a good thing. So I'm going to change it up. I'm going to start in verse 13. Is that all right? Verse 13. If I shut up heaven, who's the I? God. God says, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence, among my people, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, God's saying, if I do this, verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Amen. 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 That's a big old if. I know Scott talked about it last night, but that's a big if. And where's the burden at? It's on you. And Jesus, God says, if I do this to you, this is how you come back to me. This is how you get rid of the pestilence in your land. This is how you get rid of, of the, uh, the where there's no rain, the drought in your land. How do you get rid of the, the, what is it? the locust? How do you get the locust in your land? You know, we got some spiritual locusts in our land. We got some spiritual pestilence in our land. We got some junk going on in our land, right? How do you come? How do you get him to come back and heal the land? If my people, how many of his people we got in the house? Yeah, he's talking to you. From thousands of years ago until this moment right now, God is speaking to you directly. You are his people, and if. My people do this. Are you called by his name? Yes, come on. Every one of us is called to a purpose, right? Yeah. Right? If you don't know your calling, there's an altar. God will show you to you. I guarantee you, if you seek him, he will be found. Amen. Every one of us have a, has a purpose and a calling. And it may not be up here, it may not be out there, it may be handing out food to poor people. Come on. You don't know. Until you find out. Amen. 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 I know what God has called me to do. Share the gospel. Amen. As often with as many as possible. Amen. So, if my people which are called by my name shall, number one, humble themselves. Yes, come on, What's it mean to humble yourself? What's it mean? What's it mean? If, if you flip, hold your spot, flip on over to Psalms 34. Psalms 34. You get there, say amen. 
Well, I mean, I'm going to go ahead. Verse 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivered them out of all their troubles. Right? That's, that's back to 2 Chronicles 7. The same thing, right? And verse 18, the Lord is nigh, and he's close, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saith as such as be of a contrite spirit. What's it mean to be of a contrite spirit? Anybody know what that means? Contract means turn to dust. Where did you start off with? Where did man start off with? Dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We know that, right? If you realize, if you humble yourself to realize you are nothing but dust without Almighty God. You are nothing but dust without the, the Spirit of God dwelling in you. You are nothing but dust without the calling of God upon you to go Go forth, preach the gospel, share the truth, share the testimony of what God's done in your life. You're nothing but dust. That's being humble. Don't forget who you are, where you came from. Start with dust. Amen? The Lord is nigh to them that are a broken spirit and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. Amen? Amen. Amen. But many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Yes, that, that means you can fight, you can struggle, you can try to get out of your mess on your own. You ain't going to do it. But the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Yes. Amen. He is my deliverer. Amen. Amen. Flip back over to 2 Chronicles. I ain't done there. <laughs> if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and do what? Pray. Pray. We dealt with that last night. Thank you, brother. And seek my face. What's it mean to seek his face? That, that holy song, that's his face. Seek his face. And no man can see my face and live. Because your flesh can't stand before him. What happened to John? He fell at his feet as dead. The beloved. Seek my face. You don't get that part when you need to go home and study what that looks like over and over again. And where I'm going to focus tonight is turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will hear their land. If you've not read the rest of 2 Chronicles 7, it's, it says in the next few verses, this is what happens if you don't. You'll be a byword. People will say, what happened to those people? They must have ran away from God. They must have turned away from God. They are wicked, wicked, wicked people. They, they had a God who they held in high esteem, and they turned away from him. <coughs> they become a byword. Right? Oh, I want to. I want to learn you something real quick. Y'all, yeah. y'all know that that symbol, the heart. Everybody does that. Y'all, y'all know where that symbol comes from. Anybody know? That 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 came from. It's called a silphium. It was a certain plant that was only harvested in one area in the city of Cyrene. One area. The city of Cyrene was known as the home of the false god Venus and her son Cupid. That's where it comes from. At this time that this was found and used, some use it for a medicine, some use it, use it to make a cough syrup, right? But the, the main use for this silphium, which the, the leaf is where we get that symbol from. Can't do it right. The leaf is where we get that symbol from. <clears throat> the main use for that was as birth control and abortifacient, ab which means a, a chemical that makes an abortion happen. If somebody's pregnant, they take this chemical and it makes an abortion happen. <coughs> And yeah, how many of you ever heard of Nero? You know, the one that dipped Christians in wax and led them on fire to light the streets in his garden? Yeah, Nero harvested this plant to extinction. This plant, which was used to, as a contraceptive and as a, to cause abortions so they could have as much wild, you know what, as possible. There's kids in the house. What are you laying in his heart now? It's kind of crazy when you go look at the history stuff, and I did not expect I'd find that. 
So there it is. Now you know. Every time you see this, a little Cupid. And, and Cupid, because you know what Cupid was for? Cupid was, was when his arrow hit you, it would release you from your inhibitions. I mean, everything that would stop you from doing a bad thing would be gone from you, so you would do you know, whatever willy-nilly comes to mind, or whoever comes to mind. So I'm going to talk about the heart tonight. <clears throat> what does your heart beat for? What does your heart beat for? This message spoke to me long before it's preached to you. I'm telling you. And I've dealt with this thing all day long. What does your heart beat for? I'll tell you mine. My boy's holding my cell phone. Facebook thing. You stepped on my toes real good last night. Appreciate it. Thank you. We need that. That's mine. Anybody else's? We all ain't brave, brave enough to raise your hand. Uh, keep playing. How about... How about your, uh, how about games? Me all. Yeah. Addicted to games? I'm not. I, try, I, I can be, that's why I don't play the games. I ain't got time for no games. How about, how about fashion? Some of you ladies, are you addicted to fashion? Do you see that purse you got to have it? You dream of having that dress or those shoes or whatever? How about, how about celebrities? How many of y'all are addicted to just keep it up with the latest trend and want these What's the Paris Hilton's doing? And I don't know who all out there. So I don't pay attention to that, John. Uh, how many of y'all into that? No? Anybody? Some of y'all just ain't raising your hands if you're scared. I know. How about, oh, I'm going to step on some toes now. How about hunting and fishing? Woo! Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. How about cars? Some people are addicted to cars. They have a passion for cars. How about your job? Anybody? Addicted to your job. How about TV shows? Yeah. Movies? Yeah. We'll head home now. How many of y'all are just addicted to church? Yeah. Yeah, I love church. How about who holds the primary role in your heart? Your family? We, and, I, and I say this often, when you wake up first thing in the morning, what's the first thing on your mind? Coffee talk. You got on my toes right there. Amen. <laughs> Coffee pot. That, that is a tough one to get over, let me tell you. It will hurt. It hurts. What's the first thing you wake you think of when you wake up in the morning? What's the last thing you think of when you get up and when you lay your head down at night? That's your idol. How many idolaters do we have in the room? Probably just don't know. And uh, hopefully by the time we get done tonight, we're all going to know. This, this, hit, this hit home with me, I'm telling you. None of those things in and of themselves are evil, are sinful. None of those things. Well, maybe TV. Uh, but, but, oh, <laughs> except maybe a couple, but, but they can be when they take priority over God. When you put those things in such high esteem that you put God in any level below that. Yeah. It could be just a smidgen before. When you could put God here and that, that thing is right there, that's your idol. Yeah. You're an idolater. Even church can be You're right. here. You're right. And God here. Yeah. Family can be here. Man. I love a good looking car. Put it above my God. Yeah. Matthew 15, verse 8. There, say amen. Yeah. This people draws nigh to me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Who's he speaking to? Speaking to me. When you've got an idol in your life, or several, you can come to church and you can sing the songs. You can put money in the offering plate. Amen? Yeah. And your heart still flees far from it. Right. You can say all you want and claim to be a Christian when really you're a, a TV worshiper. Wow. You can say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, and yet... Covet that brand new truck. 
Because you can't do both. You can't have both. There's either one or the other. There's no fence. They said the devil owns a fence. Well, he's a, he's a liar because there is no fence. He's stupid. The devil is just stupid. Anybody that gets to heaven and willingly gets himself kicked out is an idiot. I hate to say that, but it's true. The same, the same thing in Mark 7 6. It sounds so nice, he said it twice. The people draw down to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But they don't honor me with their heart. They don't live after me. They don't have a heart after me. They don't live every waking moment to seek what God has for me today. What are you having for me this minute? Let me seek my Bible. You know, Scott had that great illustration with the phone. Well, I witnessed that myself today. And my, my loving wife. How many of y'all have a loving wife that acts as your conscience? She does. My little Jimmy Cricket. I love her. She does a great job. <clears throat> And you don't want to hear it right off, do you? No. no. No, but it sits in there and eats on you and eats on you, and then God gets hold of you too. It's like, okay, okay. All right. You don't have to turn there in Matthew 6 21. It says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is. Where's your treasure? Is your treasure sitting at home? Got your rod and reels all locked and loaded? Is it that hot rod sitting in the garage? Is that that new dress still got the tag on it you have yet to put on? Is it that, that new Marvel movie that's getting ready to come out? You just got to see it. You can't stop thinking about it. I watched the previews ten times. Well, I, have not. I don't even know what it is right now. But there's, there's something. That TV show, you can't wait till the new season comes out. You think about it, you check on it how many times a day? Try this. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know, when, when you get around somebody, you start talking to somebody, you're just having a conversation with somebody, you find out real quick what their idols are. You find out real quick where their passions lie. Right. You find out real quick. Do they first talk to you about God things? Man, I ran across this scripture. Man, it's got me so consumed and just eating me up and alive. Man, truth. You get that? Or they said, man, I can't wait to tell you what my kids did. What holds our priority? What holds number one? Man, did you see that new Camaro coming out? I don't know. I don't even know. Because people, the, the scripture is true. People want to talk about what they're passionate about. And you, you can see it all over. Amen? Amen. There's not enough right names. Because you know it's true. Amen. You know it's true. Yeah, how many of y'all recall when that conversation Jesus had a while ago? Coming in the building and talk, talk about whatever. There. Psalms 10 verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord what? Abhorreth. The wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous. Covetous. Whom the Lord abhorreth. Who's the Lord abhor? Wicked and covetous. Both. God abhors them. That's worse than being mad at. He detests those things, those people that do those things. He finds it so such a stench in his nostrils. This is worse than the lukewarm that he wants to spit out. This is disgusting to him. I abhor it. I abhor broccoli. I abhor tofu. Amen. Amen. But the wicked boasts of his heart desire. You get around them, they'll talk about it. They'll tell you what they desire. They'll tell you what they're talking about. And they'll tell you about that, that new thing that they want. Ooh, did you see those new singers going on 7 DC people? They have me some of those. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait to pay them. Got to spend all my check on this new game system or this movie coming out or whatever. Or it could be food. 
Yep, you cheese fries and back of Taco Bell. Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. How many know those TV commercials are made to make you covet? That is the design by Satan is, hey, look at this and watch it. That's right. Flip back over to Psalm 34 again, verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Who's the saint? Who's supposed to fear him? Amen. Fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Be content with those things you have. Be content with those things you have. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because if he's all you can have, he's all you need. You don't need anything else. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. Amen. What if we could sing that honestly? What if we could sing that with truth? It's not just a song. It should be the prayer of our heart daily. God, all I need is you. All I need is you. In fact, talk about the heart. Jeremiah 17. Verse 9, I'll quote it, y'all know it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who, who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God's searching you. God's searching what's in you and knows what you desire and knows it's not him. God's searching your heart. And I can tell you, my heart's lied to me. Amen. Saying, this is okay. You're okay if you do that. You're okay. That's okay. You know how hard it was to stay off my phone today? People got mad at me because I wasn't answering my phone. It is hard. It's not like food. You don't need it. It's not food. 20 years ago, did you have one? Nope. I had a CB. You did not have a phone where everybody and their brother tries to call you when you're trying to focus on God. Romans 2, verse 4. Praise the Lord, we get to sit in a building not in fear of reading the Bible, not in fear of hearing God's Word, not in fear of praying or lifting our hands or worshiping God. Praise the Lord. There are our brothers and sisters around the globe are dying daily. The average has went up to 260, I just read today. Average of 260 people die for Christ. Not, not just they died, not just they went to the church. They stood up for Christ. I read a story this morning about a man. He went, they were having this little Bible study, and people come in, they killed his wife and they killed his child. They spared him and killed everybody else in the church. And then they torched him. The very next day. He was behind that charred pulpit reading scriptures to two people. After losing all of his congregation, his wife and his child, and he's standing there firm, preaching the gospel to anybody that can hear it. We're so apathetic. We are so complacent. We have no idea what it means to face persecution. And I pray God we do. I know it's a hard thing to pray, but I pray God we do. The only time you see the true church arise is in true persecution. You can look back in history over and over and over again. That you see Christ's church, persecution, persecution, and then persecution lets off in complacency and false doctrine and all this other junk comes in and then persecution and then there it comes, complacency. False doctrine over and over and over again. Romans 2, verse 4. For despise it thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. God is good, we are not. And that should call us to seek his holy face. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, Treasure us up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance 
in well doing, see for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory and honor and peace to every man. Say every man. Amen. Their work is good. Yes. Amen. To the Jew first and also the Gentile. There is no respecter of persons with God. Amen. I don't care what badge you wear, whether you're Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever. Do you belong to Him? Amen. Do you know Him? Yes. Can you without a doubt stand firm when persecution comes? I know Him and I will not falter. I will not fall. I will not bow down. I will not serve any other God. I stand firm. Amen. I'll not give up. Or will you harden your heart? It's just those little things. When God tells you, you need to say something. Share that scripture with them. Share your testimony with them. God says go when you say no. I'm an idolater. Worship of the son. I care more about my feelings getting hurt and their feelings getting hurt than I do that that soul is, will wind up in hell unless God intervenes. And he wants to use you to do it. Amen. We ourselves are our own, our own worst idol. He says, after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath. It's when you get callous to the things of God. You get callous to that conviction that was once there. But what, what David say? Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Yes, sir. That's when you knew for a fact this is light, this is dark, this is evil, this is righteous, and I don't want to be anywhere in the middle. Amen. That's what it's all about. Prophet, 
I, the Lord, will answer. The prophet's not going to answer them. I'm going to answer them directly. You don't have to be my voice. He says, I, will, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore, save the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel, the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separates himself from me, setteth up his idols in his heart, and puts a stumbling block of iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I will set my face against that man, I will make him a sign and a proverb. I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye know that I am the Lord. Amen. Those are strong words. Yes, and it goes right along with Second Second Chronicles. Same thing. This is what I'll do if my people don't turn back from me. If they don't forsake their sin. If they don't forsake their idolatry. I will set my face against them. I will make him a sign and a proverb. People are going to talk about you for a long time. I will cut him off in the midst of my people. You shall know that I am the Lord. How many, how many great men of God can you think of that fell and it was public? Yeah. I can't tell you how many people I ran into that don't go to church because Jimmy Swigert fell. You idolater. Jimmy Swaggart is not your staple to live by. So what? He fell. Pray for him. Amen. How many others? All and all. You know, the list goes on. It's like every time you turn around, there's somebody. Right? Just because they're in the public eye. How are they different from us? Because ours isn't as public. But yet we'll, we'll point our fingers and we'll scorn at them. God commands us to repent from the idols of our heart. I'm going to run through these real quick. Hebrews 4, 7. Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your heart. Hebrews 3, 15. While it's today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your heart. Hebrews 3, 8. Harden not your heart is in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. You think He's trying to get you His point across? Amen. And there's several more that I didn't go into. He warns us again and again, if you'll hear his voice, if my people, if you'll hear his voice, y'all may think me, think me crazy, but I will never forget the first time that I heard the voice of God, and I have never been the same since. Right. Never been the same since. And if you've not heard his voice, I'm not talking about that little whisper that guides you in the right direction. The audible voice of God. God spoke to me and said, my son, what you're doing, you can't continue to do and go where I need you to go. I'll never forget those words in my life. And I just said, yes. Amen. And it was like a light switch. All my addictions fell away. All my wants and desires fell away. Everything but him was left. You think you're too far gone, that, that, or you're too good, that your heart can't be hardened? You think you're above that? That your heart can't your heart can't be hardened? I'm not. I guarantee that everyone in here is our heart is hardened to something. We are ignorant of something that we've we've closed our eyes to. Amen. Every one of us. In Mark 3 5. The disciples. <coughs> Jesus was grieved for the hardness of their heart. Mark 6, 52. They consider not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. These are those walking and talking with Jesus, the disciples, those he loved the most. And he was upset with them because their heart was hardened. They forgot the miracle that he did, the loaves and bread. He, he said, Master, what are we going to eat? So what happened to those 12 baskets? I just made 12 baskets, Esther, for you. What are you doing? How many of y'all know the Great Commission? Starts in Mark 16, 15. 
Mark 16, 14, the verse right before. Right before he gives this great, this great message to not only his disciples, but to all of us. Go ye into all the world. Right? The, the, the verse right before that, what's he do? Mark 16, 14, afterward he appeared unto the eleven and as they sat down at meat. He upbraided them with their unbelief and their hardness of heart. He said he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. The very disciples, he upbraided them for their hardness of heart. Are we inescapable from being upbraided by God? Being chastised by God? If you're not chastised by God, where are you? You're none of His. None of His. Psalm 101, verse 3. Why don't you turn there? We all need to read this. I need to read this. This is one of them bathroom verses that you put on your mirror when you go to the bathroom. You know, do your hair or whatever. It's, it's, it's one of them. It's one of them that hit me like a, like a steamroller today. Psalm 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. What happens when you put the wicked thing before your eye, before your eyes? These are the, you know, you said it last night. These are eye gates. These are ear gates. This is a heart gate. You know, what you put in, it sinks into your soul. Well, I'll set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. What's turning aside? Putting a wicked thing before your eyes. That's turning aside. We call it backsliding, don't we? We call it slipping away. See, a froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. A froward, you're just a little tilted off. You're just not perfect. Missed it by a little kelter there. <clears throat> Proverbs 14, verse 12. You know, you know why I give so many scriptures? The more scriptures I get, the less opinion I've got. Because it's all God's Word. You can disagree with me all day long, but if you disagree with God's Word, you've got a problem with God and not me. Romans 14, verse 12. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You can go about doing what you want to do, what you think is right to do, but unless it's what God wants you to do, the end is death. And it's not just you're going to have a heart attack and die one day. It is spiritual death. The day, the day that God gives you to step this way, and step this way, and this step this way, and make your way right there, this is where you're going, and you say, nope, that's death. One step to the right or to the left. One step outside of His will. One step outside of the calling you're called to do. One step aside from being everything God has designed you to be. It's sin. It's death. And you, if you let that disease of sin fester, it will kill you. It'll be a cancer that consumes you. And if you're in the body when this happens, that cancer will also leach out to other people. It's contagious. What sin we allow in the body grows and grows. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. The end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. God's going to lead him to his own destruction. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believe every word, but the prudent man look well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rages in his confidence. How, how many people did I go to share Jesus with? How many, how many of y'all witness? How many times you share Jesus with somebody and they, they say, I'm good. <laughs> Fine. Uh, me and Jesus, we got a thing going on. And we're, we're like kids. You 
fool. That's what the Bible says. You're a fool. It also says, call a fool. The Bible says, you're a fool. If you're boasting of your own goodness. If you say, I'm all, I'm all right. The wise man fears and departed from evil. But the fool rages. How many people sit in our pews Sunday after Sunday after Sunday confident and full of sin? Without conviction. Without any desire to draw closer to God. Without any, any unction to come out of the jump that they're in and draw near to Him who sent His Son. Another backsliding verse. 2 Peter 3.17 Ye therefore, beloved, Seeing ye know these things before, beware, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfast. What does it say when somebody goes to correct another brother? Go in the spirit of meekness, lest ye also be tempted and drawn away. Hebrews 10.38 Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, draw back from where? Where were you? You got to be somewhere to draw back from somewhere. If any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. If any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Does that make you think twice? Does that make you think? Psalms 37 31. Talks about backsliders way back in Psalms. The law of God is in his heart, none of his steps shall slide. Really? That sounds pretty amazing. Thank you, David, for writing that. That's, that sounds hunky dory. You know, I think we can deal with that. You know, gives us a little hope, right? The law of God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. It doesn't say a few. It doesn't say, well, every once in a while. It says, none of his steps shall slide. Oh, well, how's that? And Jesus said, be ye perfect, be ye holy. And he gives us the answer on how to do it. Jesus said, what's the law? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. All the laws contained in these two things. Love. How, how is it possible you can walk in the law of God and have it in your heart? Is love? The Holy Spirit in you, does, does the Holy Spirit in you allow you to lie? Does it allow you to covet? Steal? Adultery? Fornication? No, all these things are contrary to God. Amen. If you have a spirit in you that allow, that's okay with you doing that thing, it ain't holy. Yeah. It ain't righteous. And it ain't from God. Amen. Amen. 2 Peter 1. What's our answer? How do we flee this idolatry that consumes us? That the, the consumerism world we're in. How do, how do we get rid of this stuff? How do we overcome it? We shall overcome by testimony. And the blood of the Lamb. Because we can't do it on our own. What's our testimony without the blood? Dumb. It's garbage. It ain't nothing. If, if, if your testimony is not giving glory to God, it ain't much of a testimony. It's you boasting about your own goodness. Amen. 2 Peter 1, verse 5. And besides this, give all diligence. Add to your faith, virtue. Add to virtue. Come on, people. And to knowledge. And to temperance. And to patience. And to godliness. It's a brotherly kindness. Charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these, lacks these things is blind, cannot see afar off, hath forgotten he was purged from his old sins. Has forgotten he was purged from his old sins. What happens to a person that has forgotten they're purged from their own sins? You've forgotten? The sacrifice Jesus made for you? How is this even possible? How is it possible to forget the nails that were put in his hand? The blood?
blood that ran down from the thorns. The beating that he took. The unrecognizableness of his face. I'm talking way beyond the Passion of the Christ movie. Way beyond the Jesus movie. Way beyond every movie you thought of. It was a thousand times worse. They couldn't create that stuff in Hollywood. It'd be rated X anyway if they tried. But we, we, we've got these cushy little idea of Jesus, you know, carrying his cross and everything else, and he goes on there. Man, it's, it's not even like that. And, and you know, that's idolatry that they, they make us think those things out of living. How do you forget those things? He says, he that lacks these things. That means they, they, they've never grown up in Christ. Hebrews 6, 1, they were still on the milk. They never grew up. They never did what was necessary to take the steps to grow in Christ and not be a babe anymore. we got churches full of them. Content, complacent, pure. They will never do the kingdom of God not a bit of good unless they repent. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Afar off being judgment, glory, and have no part in the kingdom. And has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence. What's it mean to give diligence? Be steadfast. This is what i got to do today. i got plans. How many of y'all got a list you got to go by every day? Even a mental list, you can write it down. Am I the only one that don't get things done without a list? Hey, I gotta have a list. But 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 give it diligence. Give diligence to do what's needed of you. Read your word. Pray to God that He might change you. Give diligence. What would you say of a soldier that went into boot camp and never gave diligence to get up for PT? What would happen to that man? How many military you have in here? What would happen to that guy? Wouldn't be long. They would make life miserable for him. Why are we like that in the body of Christ? Will we be okay with somebody not giving their due diligence? Why would we be okay with a soldier sitting on the pew, not giving their PT, not reading their word, not seeking God with all their heart, not loving their neighbors herself? Verse 10, Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Amen. Never fall. Amen. Never fall. Amen. If you do these things, you'll never fall. That's not, that don't mean you, that you don't get to call, you know, oh, I did it again. Oh, brother, sister, I did it again. Brother, sister, I did it again. That's sin cycle. It's like all those stationary bicycles you get on and you don't go nowhere. And that's what people are calling to. Because they don't give their due diligence to add, to add, to add to this, to add to this, to add to this. And never grow in Christ Jesus. But, what a promise. You ever heard this before? You do these things, you'll never fall. What's it mean to fall? Mr. the more hammer key? To, to, to not be like Christ in any way, shape, or form. If you do these things, you'll never fall. I heard this today. Well, it set me back. Have you done more to build the kingdom in your born again state than you did to tear it down in your lost state? Since you've come to Christ and been born again, I would pray that you've been born again. You, you're not just a false convert or one repute. Have you did more since you came to Christ to build the kingdom than you did prior to tearing it down? Blasphemy. Cursing God. Y'all might not believe me, but I, I was a pastor in the church when I got saved. And I became born again. And I did a lot of bad prior to that, trying my best to tear down the kingdom. And I am steadfast and I'm diligent that I will do more whatever years and time God's given me to overcome to build a kingdom see people come to Christ there, there's no better there's no better entertainment no better thing than to see a lost person come into the kingdom 
you know, we, we, we like concerts and we like to go to Christian concerts and, and go picnics and this stuff and have Christian entertainment. Even the songs we sing, they're entertaining. And a lot of times we miss out on what we're doing is supposed to be glorifying and exalting the King. And yet we come and be entertained. Yet the best entertainment any believer could ever have is to see a, a young person come to Christ. Yes. Or an old person come to Christ. Yes. That God will magnificently change and take that dirty, rotten of a person and clean them and make them whole and restore them. Amen. Or to see a miracle work. Amen. Come on. And I've seen so many miracles in my day. I don't know why I would ever not have any faith. I'm a miracle. I, mean, I can sit up here and spend hours sharing the testimony of how I'm able to stand up here. Because God wrought a miracle in me. That's entertaining. Amen. That's entertaining. How many of y'all know we, we can be hard hearted to the poor? How many know we can be hard hearted to the poor? To the needs of others. To those that are hungry. To the widows. How many widow shut ins do we have that don't get visited? Saw that. What about orphans? How many of y'all know an orphan? Zechariah 7, start with verse 8. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken. They pulled away the shoulder. And they stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as adamant stone, lest they should hear the law. And the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it's come to pass that he cried that they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear, says the Lord of hosts. I got this picture in my head of this. Come here, brother. I got this picture in my head, in my head of this. God, God's pushing you somewhere. God's pushing you somewhere. There's, there's some hungry people. Okay? And what? They're, they're right over here. And I'm going to push you. And you your shoulders away. Like a football spin, you know? We pull ourselves away. And God says, there's orphans. What, what's, what do you do? He does that football spin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I jerked your shoulder back. Does that football spin and get to off of me. Right? See, surrounded by widows. And God's pushing you to the widows. Get off of me. That's how I picture it in my mind. How do we oppress them? Don't provide for their needs. For one, we don't seek them out. We press them by our negligence and our apathy to places. You know what the sins of Sodom were? Everybody says homosexuality. That's what the sins of Sodom were. Oh. Ezekiel 16, 48 and 50. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride. Fullness of bread, abundance of idleness, lazy. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor in need. I, I like what Ruth Graham said, and I don't like it, but it's true. <laughs> that God doesn't pour his wrath upon America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, at, at one time in this country, the, the job of caring for the poor and the needy and the widows and the orphans. It wasn't Medicare, it wasn't Medicaid, it wasn't food stamps. It was the church. Amen. And the church did it. And the church slacks. Here's my responsibility. My God-given responsibility um, here. Government. We're doing a horrible job. Here, government, you do this for us. What a lie from him. What a lie from him. And has the government done a good job of it? No. You know, I don't know how many, 
I mean, elderly guy here, that if they didn't get the food that we hand out, they wouldn't be able to get their medicine. They wouldn't be able to pay their lights. They wouldn't on and on and on and on and on. Because the government's not taking care of them. The family's not taking care of them. And the church is not taking care of them as a whole. Considering all this that I've said, and I'm, doing, I'm just to the tip of the iceberg. Considering all this that I've said, where do you stand? Do you sit there and you continue to build the harvest around your heart? Do you just take a spackle and cement and you just keep building it up? And you keep building it up? So that's not me. He's not talking about me. That scripture is not talking about me. I'm good. I got to figure that out. Or, or is God doing something to me? Is God, as he put it, is God wrecking me? Is God breaking that heart, that hardened heart? Is God changing your mind about how you do things? Or are you just going to go home and do the same thing you've always done? Are you going to live the same life that you've always lived? Or are you just going to continue on and just ignore the preacher? Just ignore God's word? No way to see. I know that shows filth when they're watching TV. I know they take God's name in vain when they're watching TV. I know there's that shows full of adultery and, and fornication and, and they cuss and they make fun of Christians. But it's entertaining. I'm watching TV. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and all your idols. I will cleanse you. Every day. This is God speaking to you. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. From all your idols will I clean you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. You shall keep my judgments. keep that stuff anymore. I will take away the stony heart, heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You shall keep my judgments and do them. You want to walk home? God can cause you to walk home. But the ball's in your court if you so choose. I choose. Today I choose. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. The day's not over yet. It's dark outside. I know it's getting late and I don't care. Now some of you might. But choose you this day for whom it will serve. I'll sit in here all night long. I'm used to staying up late. And I don't mind. Somebody wants to get, get, needs to get prayed through. I'll pray them through. Amen. 
Whatever cost it takes, whatever it takes, I don't care. If you want to confess every single nasty thing you ever did in your life, I will listen and I will pray with you and I will seek God with you until you know without a shadow of a doubt, I may do. I knew there's no thing. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Not some things, all things. Amen. God can do a mighty work in you if you let Him. Amen. But you gotta let Him. You gotta let Him. You need to be so sick of that thing that, that turns your head. So sick of that thing that distracts you from God's Word. Think of that stinking phone. Facebook. Cars. That TV show. That movie coming out. The new dress. If your family keeps you from your Bible, you need to get away. And seek God. And be the man and the woman of God He needs you to be for your family. Amen. I'm not telling you to leave your kids. By no means. I'm, I'm telling you, get right with God. Seek God. Put the family in their right perspective. And it will be glorious. Amen. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Well, you want to come play some... There's a way that seems right on a man. For a man. In the end there of his death. I pray you don't choose that way because there's only the way, the truth, the life. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other way. Amen. It ain't Mohammed. It ain't Buddha. It ain't Hare Krishna. It ain't Mother Teresa. It ain't Pope, whatever his name is. It's Jesus. Amen. There's salvation found in no other name. No other name is higher than Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you know him? Can you sincerely say in your heart right now, I know it. Nothing else matters. I know it. And I'm willing to stand. I was going to read the, the story of Perpetua. Perpetua is found in Fox and Book of Martyrs. And uh, Perpetua was captured. For whatever reason, she was caught being a Christian. In a time when it was not a good thing to be a Christian, according to them. She was caught. And she was facing death. All she had to do was take all she had to do was take this. There's this bowl. All you had to do is cast the incense into that bowl to the false god. Whatever god they choose. All she had to do was cast that in there. She said no. Her father comes in crying, just tore up, holding Perpetua's baby girl. He says, Don't, just cast it in. Do it for her sake.
whom we serve. The altar is open. The altar is open. If you feel like crying out to God, we will cry out with you. There are many great men of God here that I trust that will, will stand firm with you. The hour is not. The hour is not. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Count your freedoms for long. Count it as a precious thing to leave you to sit here in freedom. As it could be tomorrow, it's no more. Cast down your idolatry this day. So God is so mighty, He's so holy, and so great. I dare not put anything close next to it. There's nothing close. And I can compare to my God. You take the brightest light, stare at the sun for 10 minutes until you go blind. It doesn't even compare to the white, precious, holy light that is Jesus Christ. Nothing comes close. Consider your options. You know, the, the, the average, the average. 160,000 people every night die in their sleep. 160,000 people every night die in their sleep. Now you reckon how much of a miracle it is that you woke up in the morning. How much of a miracle is, is it that you woke up this morning and you get to sit here and you get to read God's Word, you get to hear God's Word, and you get to have an option. What are you going to do with it? I got tomorrow. No, you don't. I'll wait until Sunday. No, you don't. You know, the people I know that waiting and have fun in my life, and one of these days, I'll get right. It's wicked. It's idolatry. 